All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Little Fish community meeting. We've already been chatting uh, about F9 proposals, and we're just going to hop right in talking about modules. Uh, so these are just groups of work that we have in each proposal. We're going through one of those proposals right now uh, called the Organizations of the Ocean, which is in uh, one of the cross-chain cross -chain collaboration challenge. So the work in for this proposal for, uh, is related on going to different uh, blockchain communities, different blockchains, finding new organizations that exist uh, within these blockchains, and then looking at the organizational structure, the organizational processes, the problems they're facing, their solutions to these problems, their successes. So those are the types of uh, the research areas that this, uh, this proposal and this module is focusing on. So there is, so Little Fish Foundation is a teal organization uh, built on teal organization principles. What does that mean? That means we value self-management. We value natural dynamic hierarchies. Like, uh, and this is very aligned with the structures uh, that decentralized blockchains provide us. It's pretty much the parallel of the technology on the, on the organizational level. And there are a few organizations in the space that are looking to build something like this. I think a lot of organizations have a clue into what they're doing with the theoretical framework of their organizations. But, uh, and there are some very good ideas on how to organize around these principles, but these are very new. Like most businesses don't work on these principles, self-management, natural hierarchies. No, they, they work on pyramid hierarchies based on bosses and bosses, bosses and managers and managers, <clears throat> managers. Uh, so learning about how to problem solve within this framework is quite important because there are many problems like uh, in this space. Like if someone isn't telling you what to do, like, how do you know what to do? Like that is a question that, that we, we've been having. Like how do we ensure everyone knows what, what can be done? And that's kind of one of the reasons why we have this module system where anyone can look at the work that is that needs to be done, see if it matches with their own inclinations, their skills, their expertise. And if they wanna contribute, they can just contribute to that module. So this is, uh, this is all about learning about all those processes. And we have in this proposal, another one, it's all about internal research so documenting those processes that I just mentioned, uh, going into a little bit of detail. Uh, so this module system, how good it's gonna work, we're going to be working on uh, documenting it and then reporting on it within this module. We're also going to be making payments using the action system that we're developing. So how that's gonna work, we're going to research that and make sure it works well. Uh, what doesn't work, we're going to try to understand and try to build processes. And we're going to make the knowledge that we generate from all this internal research as part of this uh, proposal on this platform or uh, the Walt, uh, the Little Fish Foundation knowledge base. And as part of this, this is, I'd like to show this one. Um, so there's this group who build these teal organization maps. Let's see, hope you guys can see this well. Maybe it's a little low quality, but you can maybe get the idea about all the different uh, fields that make up an organization. So there's a group of consultants who find, who do the, who conduct research into organizations do interviews with uh, its members and build uh, build this map for organizations. So as part of this proposal, we'll be consulting with these guys 
and getting our own map of uh, of where we are in each of these different uh, areas of an organization and see what needs to be improved in terms of this teal organizational principles and what we're doing well and what we can do better. And this will help us all uh, get closer to this, to teal organization principles and build a better, more effective organization around it. So I'd like to take a moment, stop. If you guys have any questions, might have been a little much, too much information as always. <laughs> I promise these, these will get better. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, so this one, organizations of the ocean and the ocean just being this sort of, you know, blockchain, like our environment, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, and that the, the organizations, just like the technology, the infrastructure technology layer is different. Um, there is like how we as groups, you know, leaders making things, we organize, organize ourselves in a different way. And that there's a theoretical framework uh, that goes along with that. And that some are not, I mean, you know, there is a way that we manage, but some are not aware of that and that we're trying to um, document and that there is a group that actually do go and make a map uh, like this and that we're going to work with them. Um, will they work with us or, or what was, what's the, well, one, is that, is that sort of what, you know, my tracking? I was like, that's what's going on. Uh, that's a part of the uh, module there. And these guys just yeah. provided it as a service to just go into organizations and uh, do some interviews and then build that map. So we'll just pay them with the money we get from the proposal. Yeah. And we'll get a map of under, uh, and understand our organization a lot better. Oh, that's great. The, um, the, this month's book of the month club, Nori's not here, so I'll, I'll rep his thing, but, uh, I think he, I think the reinventing organizations is, uh, uh, that's the, the latest book. So we can maybe get some foundational knowledge about the teal organization and the, and this, uh, different, different, um, uh, organizational structures. Yeah, this this is exactly that the reinventing organizations map. They, these guys just read the book and then built a business around like, okay, let's uh, analyze how Teal is one organization. Right. It's right. pretty much what they're doing. Right. Uh, and I'm looking very much forward to that meeting uh, later on this week where we talk about that book because it's yeah, yeah. It, it's on Saturday after the swarm session. Yeah. Yeah. Which so, is it just this Saturday coming up or is it? Yep. This Saturday. Uh, okay, yeah. cool. I, I can send you the link right now to the chat. Yeah. Cool. 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 So uh, another question. Um, when are we planning uh, publishing these proposals? Uh, since we have 10 days before the deadline is over. Yeah. Or we are we have, deadline. Uh, there are two that is already published. Uh, I'm trying to work out some like common parts of the or, of the proposals that I'm just changing all the time, and I'll try to figure that out in the next few days and publish these to these other three uh, because it's it's a lot of work just changing it in one place and then change going back and changing it in another. That's that's the main uh, issue that I've been facing writing these proposals so far. And that's why they're not up on uh, Obsidian right now as well. Instead, we, we just have these, these to show instead. Just a link to the latest document. Um, so let's go back. So we went through organizations of the ocean Let's go through this one, the technologies of the ocean, which is pretty much a twin, twin of the first one. Uh, it's it focuses on what technologies are avail available all over the different blockchains that we can 
uh, that we can use, uh, that we can start to collaborate with, that we can allow others to collaborate with. And it's pretty much the same idea, but instead of focusing on the organizational structure side, uh, we're focusing on the technology. Uh, so we have one module here focused entirely on uh, cross-chain technology on Cardano. So some, so some of the te technical, more technical people will be interested in this. So if you've heard about Milcomida, that would be uh, something that would build research here. And more generally, we have the technology of the ocean, which is pretty much any other blockchain and non-blockchain technologies that allow decentralized organizations to exist, to help them operate. Uh, so very much on the same, uh, same idea as this one with DAO tools. We research Cardano DAO tools here, and then we go and research DAO tools pretty much everywhere else. And then you can imagine together what that kind of, what that information together makes. We can just cross match all of that information from what is being built inside of Cardano versus what is being built outside of Cardano and compare where there are uh, weaknesses and there are strengths where more attention is needed ecosystem-wide, more attention is needed uh, elsewhere. We can find those. And as part of this, these uh, proposals, since it is in cross-chain collaboration, we are trying to make it more easy, easier for others to find collaboration partners in different blockchains. So we'll, once we have a map, uh, as I'm describing it, we can contact all these different groups within Cardano and outside of it and get those people to start working together. Um, and that is the overarching goal of these uh, proposals is to provide a great knowledge base to find other people who are interested in similar things and to provide like really in-depth expert knowledge and maybe provide a gateway to that expert knowledge if we're not the ones uh, providing it because as you as most of you probably know google searches in this ecosystem are almost useless information is always at the depths of some some community like this in some dao on some notion page hidden on some google doc like expert deep knowledge, it's it's not available. You're not, you're not gonna find it with a Google search. Like even which wallet to use that information, it's not available. The, the most recent recent information you can find for that through a Google search is probably from January, which is a lifetime in this ecosystem. So that's the, those are the general broad set of uh, questions, problems that we're trying to solve with these proposals that I'm, I've showed, shown you. So for the um, global DAO tools, is that part written or, or do you need help with that? Because I can write that part. Well, I, I would love uh, extra detail on it for sure. I've written it, okay. but you can drop some comments. I'll put it in the chat. Technologies of the ocean. There we go. You can just drop okay. some comments on it. I would appreciate it quite a bit. I will, I will. Awesome. And let's talk about some fun stuff. Um, let's see. Ikigai. Shaping yeah, the action. Exactly. We're going to talk Ikigai. Nice. Nice. All right, I'm just going to open up the action board one moment, please. Let's see. You know, there is a company called Ikigai Tech. Oh, huh, really? Yeah. And it's actually on Cardano. Oh, huh, really? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. I will send you. And actually, they are quite, uh, quite great, the guys. And they're coming to be a speakers in the um, Financial Times and Cardano uh, event. I Ikigai Technology, I will send you the link. Now, when is this talk? Maybe we can drop by. On, on Wednesday. Wednesday. I will, I will tell you the time, yeah. That's kind of Dr. Michaela and him and the CEO of Sipstars. Awesome. If you can send yeah. us a link for, for that one. 
Yeah, this is the Ikigai one. Ikigai technology. And they actually started as a catalyst-funded proposal. And now they have like 25 employees, they raise, they raise the VC fund and... Mm -hmm. Quite, quite cool guys. Uh, are they building what we want to build, or, or are they just? No, 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 <laughs> not at all. They're building, Hopefully not. <laughs> uh, they're building tools to build, to build on the on the blockchain, basically. But no, not at all in this concept. All right, that's good news that they're not building what we want to build. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is Ikigai. If you're not familiar with this concept, this is what it is, basically. Probably the, the Japanese who came up with the concept don't have a very simplified version of it, but this is what we get. It is doing what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and what you think the world needs. And we have this concept. We've had this concept for maybe two months at this point, and it evolved into this, this process. And uh, at the top, what we have are different groups, uh, different work groups of the Little Fish Foundation and what they do. Love House, for example, they do content, they do art, they do some YouTube explainers, they do community building. So lots of activities related to uh, the message, how we communicate. Uh, so what we have are different functions that this group is involved in. And we have this for all the different groups that we have in the Little Fish Foundation, which is Tech Help Collective, The Forge, our software uh, technical group, organization labs, this is research on all these topics, operations, outreach, and Dream Engine, which is de dealing with system-wide goals and token engineering managing the action fund, which are, we're building as part of fund nine. So we have all these different functions for each of these. What we do is we take those bubbles and then we place them. And then we also place other things that are completely unrelated and then experiment with this idea of communicating information to others through this system of Ikigai. So we have MJ who does our AI art. She puts in psychology, music, design, less seriousness the world needs, of course, open communication. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the software that allows us to do this. It's basically what the Ikigai proposal is all about. And it's not only a software uh, proposal because we already have this to play with. So what we're going to do is we're going to play with this. We're going to do this for everyone who wants to do them and little fish. We're going to place them here and we'll experiment with different use cases. So each one you see already is very different from the last one. And we're going to see all the different ways we can use this and which one is kind of useful for all of us. Like if you come here and look at this, this is a map of what I think about the project. This is a map of what Simon thinks about the project. This is a map of what Newman thinks about the project. And this allows us to learn about each other, to learn more about how we can work together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this internally, first of all, that's stage one. Then we're gonna do it the same for other communities. We have Yoram here. The, You'll be uh, using this in C4C and sustainable ADA. And I think Vada also wanted to, uh, they shown interest in using it as well. And any other pilot communities who, who wants to uh, run experiments with this. We have a module, a work module where we, we actually do that work. Like we need to go and explain to people, okay, what this is, how they can use it, how we use it, and then let them use it and then see how they use it, collect information on how they use it, and then analyze all that information and turn it into software. And that's the, uh, that's the later work. 
So we're going to have UI UX work and technical spec specification work, and also go on and developing that. Uh, so lots of things to do in the coming months for the Little Fish Foundation. Um, yeah, like on, on that one, think about it, that if you can imagine that you can put all the tasks we need to do, Newman and Simon and everyone else, in what we need and what we can pay for, and then people in the community can actually take all these tasks and move them to also what they like to do, right, and what they're good at. So actually, through that, we can actually, yeah, build it in a centralized way, how is the best way to distribute the tasks of C4C right in, in this way. I think that can be an amazing experience to do. Yep, I agree. And I love the fact that it, it, it's part of this new organizational model of uh, the network effect. It gets bigger and better, more resilient as it grows, uh, whereas other ones, they get, get more fragile and kind of, uh, they don't scale. This is something I think can scale. And what Little Fish Foundation and Shakan just uh, uh, highlighted or illustrated is a way to put it out there, train, train, teach people to do it, and then watch how they do it and iterate, and that they can be the, the we can, as little fish, can be the, um, the organizer, you know, or the, the, over, the overlayer or something, you know, that can guide the process without controlling it, which is great. Yeah, and, and imagine even now, like we're opening sub subgroups in Asia and Af Africa, right? So the people can come from this subgroup area. They can feel themselves. This is how you find the leaders. There are people that want to lead it, the people that want to participate. I mean, there's so many you know, potential to grow through that, as you say, and show that everyone can contribute, be part of that. Doesn't have to be centralized. Uh, we'll see. It will be a very interesting experiment. Excellent. I can't wait to see like how different people will approach using Ikigai because there are many different ways to use it. The way you said it, Yoram, you mentioned, okay, people will be able to see what tasks are available and then pull those tasks in and then just start work on them. That's one way to do it. Just boiling it down to even the task level, just like day to day, even like <clears throat> four hour work level, or you can do it at a much general level. And those things will diff will output, uh, will, will have different outcomes in terms of, uh, you can use it if you, if you do it at a task level, you can even do weekly, uh, weekly call-ups where everybody just assigns themselves work for that week. You can do it at a task level. Uh, but if you do it, as MJ did it with saying art, uh, psychology, those kind of things, that will uh, provide a more general view of uh, who you are and what you want to do. And those two things, it's the same software can provide both uh, services, but we need we need to figure out our way into how we can actually make that happen. And seeing how people use it will shape that uh, shape that going forward. So I'm really excited to see how that's gonna look. So if you're interested in UI work, UX work, uh, there's a lot to do here. And our flagship proposal is the last one, which is shaping action. And with this one, we're working on um, defining our own technology, the action, the metadata for it, and then building it and actually starting to work, work with it. So what we're doing with actions is we're going to be able to track what everybody is doing to make all of this, all of this a reality. So if you write some code, Great, you create an action and then we can track what you did, everyone can see. And until we get to that point, we have on our Discord channel, uh, a channel called action. So if you do anything that's related to making Little Fish a reality, I recommend you put that down into this channel or you can just 
share what you did with everyone else, letting all of us know what you did to help us out. And then it'll be very easy to adjust to real actions once we have them. And hopefully we'll have them in a few months now because we're going to have this very basic model of getting there first. We're going to have a stage one where it's very simple. It's just a bunch of photos that you upload. And we're going to start using it to track, uh, to track the work being done uh, on this project. And over time, we're going to iterate and iterate and iterate and we'll make it better uh, as time goes on. And with this proposal, we're going to take uh, that entire process from zero to a complete specification for actions that we can use on mainnet. And hopefully we'll already have been using it on the mainnet by then. Uh, we'll have lots of actions to show for it. And I've shared the Discord channel in the chat for anyone. Uh, yeah. And I've been using the action channel to share what I've been doing and hopefully everyone else shares theirs. And we'll, by the time we are actually have actions, we have a bunch of actions to already share there. Uh, that'd be great. So uh, how do you guys feel about doing some icky guys maybe? Very interested, I see. <laughs> I'm just like, I mean, I can talk. I love talking. This is my this is my time of year to talk. I got my mouth going. It's it's not early. It's not late. It's just the right time. Um, I I love the icky guy model. Um, there's a few things about it uh, to share. Uh, I think that it it does it does something for the organization, meaning that it provides a like a system map. Uh, uh, it, it, it some way of navigating this big messy mess. And I think Chakan, you, you, you uh, uh, highlighted it with like in an organization with no one telling us what to do, how do we know what to do? So you can, you look towards an internal focus and you say, oh, well, this is my icky guy, you know? Okay, what is the organizational icky guy? So that's the other thing. It helps the organization. Um, it helps Little Fish Foundation, helps c for c it helps WADA to know who is there uh, and then get things done based on that. It's like a, it's like a bottom up uh, thing. There's all kinds of sauce that I love in this uh, uh, sandwich. <laughs> uh, in this, uh, so I'm, I may be getting hungry. I may be getting hungry. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that I'm glad that Ikigai is the flagship proposal. Um, what I would love is, be, yeah, I guess 10 days is enough time, but uh, are, are we feeling late? Uh, how can we move directly? How can we make it, how can we make it work? Like, yeah. These proposals, these five are finished. Like, I, I just don't like editing five different files. So I didn't upload, like those are done. Okay. okay. Like they have some shared common parts that like I, uh, I'm micro, managing like i'm editing each time so i just don't want to do that so that's why i didn't upload so those five were completely finished like there's we can just add in detail no worries what we need is like if you want to work on these uh, if i i need you to let me know if you want to work on any of these i'm going to put down your names into the proposals and if you like a specific piece of it that you like to work in, please let me know about that. And then I can add those names in and that'll just make it look stronger and the feasibility part. But other than that, these five are completely done. Like the, there's nothing to do there. Uh, I also need uh, a good, need a good, maybe a few sentences for a, everyone who wants to get, who wants to be involved. I already have it for most of you, for Yoram, for Simon, uh, Sebastian. Uh, I'd I need it from you, Newman. Um, so just explaining what you're interested in, 
uh, in little fish in um, in the proposal that kind of thing now we can just add that information into the proposal as well uh, but still we, we we have more proposals to write so well, what i didn't mention is already we're working on two different proposals one is in the legal and financial implementations we're working with a very good expert team of lawyers from Turkey. We're gonna be doing a proposal there. Uh, we're also going to be doing a proposal with Sustainable Ada, a collaboration with them, Sustainable Ada and Open Litter, Litter Map. We're working on that proposal. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm loving Pike. Pike is my gang, is my guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna get Pike some funding this round for sure. Pike what is this in sorry uh, what's the financial implementations what do you mean well legal and financial implementations challenge so we have one there uh so that one will be focused on again with all of these proposals are producing like common knowledge that we can share with everyone else that it benefits everyone else so it will that will have the same uh, idea it will solve the legal problems that we're facing like there are some legal questions that need to be answered like what are the tax implications of earning from uh from catalyst i have no idea uh what are the legal frameworks for projects like ours like we need to know those boundaries and if at any point we need to turn this into a company we need to know and also we're turning nfts into payment methods earning solutions. What does that mean legally? It probably means nothing right now, but it will mean something in the future. So we need to keep keep uh, updated on, on those topics. So that will be what the legal uh, challenge uh, proposal will be about. Uh, but also, I personally want to do a token engineering uh, proposal, which is just the sp one specific thing in this space that is just turning me insane that I just want to work on that. So if you work, if you love token engineering, what learning more about that, if you love economics, game theory, and algorithmic uh, game theory, if you have expertise on that, I think Sebastian, you, you have uh, interests on in that area as well. Um, I'm going to try to write a proposal on that topic in the next coming few days. Uh, I'd love to I add mean your name to that as well. I do have interest, but I'm not sure if I have the expertise necessary. I was trying to write a proposal about um, an augmented bonding curve, but I hit a roadblock and I decided to not do it. So uh, happy to help, but I'm not sure if, if I have the, the jobs for the work. Well, I have no idea how to do it either. I, I, th I don't think anybody does at this point. It's such a new, brand new field. Like we've seen like what happened to Terra. Like, it's... It's just bad token engineering. Uh, like we see it every day. I don't, I don't think anybody's knowing what, knows what they're doing. Probably it's funny. I'm, I'm, if, I'm, I'm not. Sure, I mean, I, I'm not, not sure how deep this proposal goes on game theory, but I know a bit of game theory. Like maybe I can can help. Maybe can sit together. Yeah, uh, for sure. The uh, it's interesting because uh, there's no experts. Uh, the, the experts are probably the folks that have played these games like civilization and know the economics of where you can, you can do every lever on an economy uh, and have thought outside of the box. So the traditional experts are, you know, they're, they're not just experts. They're, they're sort of anti-experts that, you know, leading us down like totally wrong thing. Um, so just because you don't have experience, uh, doesn't mean, you know, uh, that you, you can't lend something, uh, to the, uh, or yeah, to the, to the, to the effort. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Jack is probably the only expert Jack O'Connor at the moment. Who is that? Uh, I think Joran can introduce him better. No, Jack O'Connor. I don't know. I know Robert yeah, is they... doing a lot of work on that, right? Ah, uh, sorry. Jack is his son. Yeah. Robert. Yeah, Robert. Robert, yeah, Robert is. Uh, I mean, he, he came to speak two hours here. I mean, I didn't understand anything. I mean, he's. Uh, Sounds like an. <laughs> he's really. Yeah, no, I mean, he's really. No, he's incredible. Really incredible, passionate about uh, multi-layer accounting and 
bending curve, and that's what he does really in the last few years. And a, a lot of knowledge, very impact driven, really, really great person. I mean, a really incredible person. And he got few proposals funded about uh, about uh, multi-level accounting. And his name is Rob. Oh, you got me interested again. So Sorry? yeah, now you got me interested again. <laughs> <laughs> you say I didn't understand the word for two hours. That normally means he knows something. So I, I mean, I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's incredible. Yeah. I mean, he's really. Yeah, I, I really like him a lot, and he's trying. Yeah, he's trying to use, he's very impact driven. Uh, yeah, he's great. The, the only challenge that he lives in New Zealand, so it's always challenging with the time zone. But uh, yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's helping a lot with the Eastern Hemisphere folks. Uh, yeah. He's yeah, got his yeah. uh, like own proposal uh, going, and, but a very open guy who you can always you know, ask for help. and. Yeah. Very approachable, very open, very happy to speak about those things completely. I got to go. See y'all later. Right. Thank you so much. Keep nice going. Job. I'll watch the video. Yep. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely going to be talking with Robert again, uh, following up on their work on the risk adjusted bonding curves. Yeah, so I think more, more we are focused, it's easier to see how he can direct us, right, from his knowledge. Somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with token engineering, uh, Simon, I think your uh, background in game theory, knowing that it will definitely apply. Like it's, it's, it's a field of many fields. So if you're interested in economics, game theory, psychology, uh, classical engineering work, optimization work, uh, industrial engineering, software like any of those uh skills will apply in token engineering because it's, it's a field of fields it brings all all of those things together and i love that uh, comparison with uh, civilization <laughs> like playing those games managing economies that is that kind of is uh, that i think maybe those people who made those games are the original token engineers because it those things need to be circular and they, those guys built circular economy. So maybe, maybe we are uh, experts just play, having played those games. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not sure. I think <laughs> my, my knowledge about game theory comes mostly from poker. Um, that's, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure to be honest. I watched like, um, like, like some, uh, some courses on, on YouTube from some universities, but um, maybe there is more to it. Like you don't know what you don't know, right? But I, I was, I, I was such a new area, it's such a new field that, I mean, if you look at it and say tokenomics and search for it, even for papers, you don't find much. Yeah, so it's kind of like you have to home it in anyhow, the one or the other way. So knowing a little is better than knowing nothing. And then from there, you probably have to develop it. Yeah. We, and with this, with, with our model, we already have like things that we can model. We have the technology to use. There's something called CatCat, which is a library on Python that we can use to model relationships and token economies. So what we're going to do is just model actions and reward sharing the things that we want to build with uh, cat cat so we already know uh, what we want to do and there's a lot of learning to do there sure but it is much more familiar in reality than uh, it is uh, when we discuss it I, I i think i think like most people when they mention token engineering they don't really uh, imagine those bits but i think at this point we have the uh, infrastructure uh, with some of these tools to actually go and build systems uh, to do token engineering properly. And I put a link in the chat, Simon. Uh, this is a lecture from Tim Roughgarden. I think it's MIT. So this is uh, mandatory learning for token engineers uh, as suggested by the 
lead developer in Arviv. So I've been going through these, learning about algorithmic game theory. Uh, it's mostly based on economic concepts and proofs. So you can just skip around a lot. Uh, but it's, it's a very good start to learn about token engineering. All right, cool. Yeah, I've, been, I've been reading some on token engineering. Uh, I think there's this course on token engineering fundamentals by the token engineering community. I'll find it and put it in uh, on our Discord. I think it, it was going to start in um, September, if I recall correctly. Cool. And we can join that as a cohort from Little Fish Foundation and then build our token as a group. That sounds fun, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. I think that's it for me. Uh, wait, I'm just, the name is Robert O'Brien, not Robert O'Connor. And I'm right. going to find for you some of his proposals. And just that you know, we track to project funding. Well, Newman left, so I don't know uh, how yeah. useful it's going to be. Hmm. Uh, I found this Twitter. There you go. I'm going to send you one proposal retroactive finance. This is one proposal of him. So I'll send that for you to, to look. And, um... Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> And then through that, you can get to Robert and... Uh, yeah, that's perfect. And if you need an intro, obviously, let me know, but he is very approachable. Yeah, that's great. Great. Let's do it. 10 days to go. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. 10 days left. Yeah. Um, I'd love any feedback, any critical constructive feedback on the proposals. If you think any part of it is looking weak. Uh, yeah, I'm putting a CA, I have a private CA. I'm putting him tomorrow on the last two proposals. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Be as brutal as humanly possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Try, to, try to make me cry. <laughs> yeah, it's not me, it's him, but I told him to, yeah. No, please, please do, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, that's how it's stronger. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. I think we can stop recording.